Welcome to OnlyFans, a Dolphins postgame show presented by Sports with So-So. Uh, please make sure to drop a like and hit that comment button. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. I'm your host, Joel, a.k.a. the Delusional Dolphin. And uh, with me, as always, is the other two Musketeers. Uh, I got my dog Soso with me, and we got Martin from Tune Out. What's going on, fellas? How you guys doing? So you're on mute right now, so we're gonna need you to unmute yourself. You know, I'm just here. trying to. I'm just trying to make sense of this game right now, man. You're speechless. I know that's why you were on mute, metaphorically and 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 uh, literally. <laughs> Pretty much. How about Pretty you, much. Martin? What's going on, brother? Uh, again, we spoke about it before the game. Thursdays are unpredictable. Thursdays are very unpredictable. Yes, sir. Um, so the Dolphins coming off of a, a very emotional victory against the Buffalo Bills. You know the conference rivals go into a short week against the Cincinnati Bengals on the road. And we come up short tonight, fellas. Um, this is this is interesting. We've done three of these already, and so far they've all been positive. We've talked about victories and everything we've loved about them. Uh, tonight's a little bit different. We're talking about a loss, unfortunately. We go down 27 to 15 on the road. Um, you know, the biggest headline around tonight was Tua going down right before, you know, the, sec the first half came to an end. A little bit scary. We got some good news. Um, we heard he's being discharged. He's going to be traveling with the team, but obviously that changed the, the the shifted the whole momentum for the game, and eventually led to you know us losing this game, twenty seven to fifteen. What are your guys' thoughts initially about what happened with Tua? For me, uh, I'll start with saying that I'm glad Tua is okay. Right, I'm sure that everybody can also express those sentiments. Um, never want to see somebody go down on the field like that. It was kind of scary, like Joel said. And uh, we're glad that we got good news and he's out uh, of the hospital heading home with the team. So happy with that. But as far as the game goes, um, it wasn't the Dolphins football that we were used to in those first three weeks. Right, We saw a lot of mis-execution. Mis a lot of missed tackles and a lot of dumb penalties, and that really set us back. What didn't you say, Martin? Yeah, uh, again, yeah, going to Tua, I'm the first one to say when he did something wrong. That's just, you know, I'm going to say it for anybody. But, yeah, right. Tua, that, that sucks to see. But I feel like it goes back to last week. Um, some things weren't cleared up before he was let play this week. Throwing out back and ankle just to possibly, again, I'm not saying, you know, but it's possible that. He wasn't yeah, ready. So the elephant in the room is that in that victory that we had at home against Buffalo last week, there was a moment where Tua uh, went down. He hit the turf pretty hard and ended up coming up. Legs buckled from under him, kind of collapsed. He went to the blue tent, ended up getting cleared, played the rest of the game. We won the game. And then there was questions around his availability coming into this, you know, week four matchup against the Bengals. Ultimately gets cleared. And then now, you know, in this play where he went down, he I mean, he got he got suplex, man. That's the best way I can describe it, because, you know, all that momentum, you know, was was on the defensive lineman side. And there was a hell of a play on, on their end. Um, you know, there was a great defensive uh, stop, you know, a horrible breakdown for us, too. It was doing great avoiding the pressure all night. And uh, he just went down real bad. And, you know, we, we saw we saw the videos. We saw the replays. I mean, they're all over the place. It, it didn't look great. Um, he ended up getting, you know, stretchered off the field. And, you know, that's it's not good, you know, because of the alleged. And I'm going to put these in quotes because everybody's throwing this out there. But the alleged two concussions within five days, it's it's not what we want to see for our franchise quarterback, fellas. No, and not even for the franchise, right? Because we want them to protect the players at all costs, right? And even if the players say that, hey, yeah, I'm fine. I'm ready to go. Um, we still need somebody to go out there and uh, make sure the players are taking care of themselves, right? And ultimately, we're going to see an instant. Uh, we saw an instant. It, wow, I can't talk tonight. That's how much the loss got me. An yeah. investigation, right, into the, the concussion protocol and whether or not it was followed correctly and, and what's going to come of that. I don't know. Obviously, some suspension, some type of fine, something's heading the Dolphins' way because there's a bad look uh, as far as optics go, right? Yeah, because obviously you have, to, you have to understand. Like, I get it. Tua coming – off last season not being good then season he's like damn i might have to sit out a game or two they're gonna say i'm weak i don't care what anybody says that goes through a player's mind i'm not a player but i'm just being realistic as a human yeah. so i feel like that had to do a lot to do with it and you have to protect the player from himself 
Sure. That, there, that's that's up for debate. That's, that's up for debate. But, you know, I think also with today's day and age in the NFL and what we know about concussion protocols and CTE and and, and the repercussions for, you know, not abiding by certain protocols, I, I feel like, you know, everything sh- should be measured. Maybe I'm looking at this through rosy colored glasses. Maybe I'm being. I feel like you are, dog, because honestly, like, and, and and again, I'm not saying that I'm that anybody knows what the hell happened, right? That's why they're gonna have the investigation. That's my is- other thing. That's my other thing. I love how everybody in the group chats all of a sudden has a PhD and everybody's a doctor and everybody knows everything about CTE. No, it's like, yeah, it looked bad. Don't get me wrong, but honestly, it did look like a knockout in the UFC where we see guys come back a couple months later and fight again in the octagon. It now, didn't look good by any means. Don't get me. Don't get me wrong. And we're gonna but- get into the reason why it got to that. But, Which is the picture, you know, the doctor came out and had that tweet where he came out the day that Tua played and got hurt. Uh, a specific doctor came out. I think he's one of the NFL doctors for a team. Don't quote me on that. But he came out and was like, oh, I don't think that Tua should play. It's such a quick turnaround, blah, 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 blah. And then again tonight, he makes another reference to how Tua shouldn't have been led to play. Who knows what comes of it, right? All we know is that Tua took a hard hit. It looked hard as hell. Um, obviously, it, it not only shook up Tua and, and concussed him, but it definitely shook up the rest of the team because then they had to play the rest of the game knowing that Tua was out. And yeah, so just, just to kind of recap, while Tua was in the game, what happened? So they come out their first drive. They look pretty good. Our defense kind of looks a little cold, right? Uh, we look, we get smacked in the mouth, and we don't know what hit us. They end up getting to the end zone, and, you know, we end up getting the ball. Tua looks sharp the first drive. He goes four for six. 64 yards, you know, gets us down into the red zone and ends up putting a, a ball, you know, right on the money, right in the perfect spot for Chase Edmonds, who just for no reason at all drops the ball and costs us a touchdown there. We have to exactly. settle for, for a field goal. Um, but then, you know, we start battling back. This was a close game. This was a real close game the whole way. Uh, we start battling back. We end up having a missed field goal. You know, we end up having, an, a, a, you know, a mixed extra point. Uh, Tua goes down. Teddy comes in. And remember last week when Teddy came in for a couple of plays, we were all a little like, what's what's going to happen here? Teddy didn't look that great. Well, all things aside, uh, except for the pick at the very end, which pretty much sealed the game for the Bengals, Teddy looked a lot better than what I had initially expected for him, you know, to come in. The rest of the team looked good. You know, the defense looked good. The the, the offense, Tyreek, I mean, Tyreek had a hell of a night tonight. What a great stat line. He had 10 catches, 160 yards. I mean, he, he's a kid bald. So we still have, you can still see that we still have a lot of great pieces around it. It's just, you know, we, we need our QB1 in there, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we will... Um, and I'm not saying again, I'm just being realistic from one to week one to week three, full, seeing full games. I'm not saying that it will be a big drop off because I don't feel like I saw enough from Tua, but in the sense of the, the grasp of the offense, I feel like Tua most likely had a better understanding of the offense and obviously it's going to be quicker to it. So yeah, there will be a difference. No, I agree. I think the and uh, you know, Martin, you and I spoke about it today. How how I I like to see the season in quarters, and for this quarter, Tua would have gotten a definite passing grade, right? Maybe not an A plus plus, but he definitely would have got B, no less than that. Um, depending on on the rest of tonight, how it would have gone, and the offense was moving with Tua, and we've seen it progress and, and be explosive with two at the helm so that's why it was kind of exciting to see this matchup with you know uh lsc quarterback a guy they they're very familiar with and having burrow versus Tua, and uh ultimately we didn't get the the full length of that matchup but i agree i think Tua looked great in the in the first quarter that he played um could he have done better yes he didn't step into that throw that he tried to connect with hill downfield um ultimately ended up getting intercepted and we know that that's his issue right that's Sometimes he just tries a little bit too hard to make the big play because he knows he has a guy like Tyree Kill. Um, I don't know, fellas. What do you think? I, I felt like the the first half showed that the defense really missed a lot of tackles and kind of, you know, allowed the Bengals to get into some rhythm and ultimately get ahead. 
Definitely, man. We definitely had a lot of missed tackles, a lot of missed opportunities to make some stops. We did make some stops when we needed them. Um, sure. We had that critical fourth down, right, where they were down there and they did yes, like sir. to go for the fourth down instead of going for the points, and we came up with a stop. So it's been, you know, reminiscent of what we've seen these first three weeks from our defense, right, making plays. But, you know, there, there was a couple other breakdowns there, man. Uh, T. Higgins had a big touchdown on Xavier Howard, you know, our Huge. defensive MVP, you know, who somebody we consider to be one of the best guys on that defense. And he just got, I mean, he got dogged on that play, bro, unfortunately, and uh, resulted in a long, long hookup between Burrow and, and Higgins. Yeah, sometimes you see those long plays. And like I've always said from the beginning, um, it's you're you're literally one on one. And according to what they were saying, he had a quad injury. So who knows if that had anything to do with it? Let's just say one play, whatever he got him. Howard gives up one of those plays. You're not really dogging him because he is who he is at the end of the day. I, I feel right. like it happens to the best of them. He is man, for sure. He is. But my my concern now is not just once this season. This is twice. Mm -hmm. What happened a couple of weeks ago with Rashard Bateman on a 75 yard touchdown. That's two bang, yeah. bang, big plays, brother. You all right, but yeah, let's just I'm say sorry, this for now, at this point. Go now ahead. I'm going to turn to a skeptic and go, "Hey, Xavier, dog, what's going on?" I Here feel like that's bit. you can turn into a skeptic if you want with Xavier. But my point is this: uh, we know that he's trying to cover three guys pretty much the whole night who all offer something different, right? He will. He has some matchups against Boyd. He has some matchups against Higgins, and again. Uh, has some matchups against Chase, and when he had matchups on Chase, he shut him down. When he had matchups on Boyd, he shut him down. One of those dudes are gonna get you, and you're gonna be tired. And it's not not that it's not fair, but it's just probably one of the main reasons why he feels like he's doing extra right now. And let's be honest, the rest of the DBs that were playing tonight did not help him at all pick up the rest of the slack back there. Like nobody except uh, Holland defended a pass back there. Like. Except for yeah. Nick Needham. I got to give Nick Needham one shot up. He played well on one play. Did he, though? On one play. On one play, I said. He on played one well play, on one play. play. <laughs> I mean, Needham is another one, man, that the more and more I see him play and the more and more I question whether or not he's capable you to see of being a on this defense, man, because there's, there's, there's some issues there. But listen, guys, I you know, we can ramble on about the defense, but, you know, we're going to beat a dead horse. The defense is good. You know, the defense kept us in this game, right? But something I want to go back to, another reason why Tua got hurt, and Martin, I think this is something you're going to you know, want to go in on, man. Of course. <laughs> lack of the run game, establishing the run game. We saw Raheem Mostert get 15 carries, have 69 yards, and that was because of the fact that late in the game we started running the ball. We didn't see that early on in the game, man. And to your point, Martin, I got to give you this credit, man. If we establish a run game and we run the ball a little bit more, we may not have lost our quarterback in this game due to an injury. True. And I've said this multiple times, multiple Very times. Uh, said, the last thing you want, the, the last thing you want to do is put your quarterback out there. I get it. We have the, these pretty weapons out there that you just want to throw the ball to 100% of the game. But if you want to protect the guy that's throwing that ball, you got to run the ball. You got to establish it. Again, all you're doing is just improving the outlook on the game when you have a run game. That, that's just my opinion. Yeah. And sorry to say, I didn't want it to be like this. That's that's not the way I wanted to be like, hey, uh, you, Martin, you were right. No, uh, Tua got hurt, and this I feel like it could have been avoided. Absolutely. And look, you know, we have the chat going on through the game, and that's something that we definitely touched on. It was like, damn, why are we not trying to run the ball more early? Like, it's it's a pass, 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 first down, pass, second down, pass, third down, pass. And it's like, okay, we're not even trying to give these guys a different look. We're in a shotgun. You know, we're three wide, four wide. Maybe we have the, the tight end there. But it's not enough of a commitment to the running game, Martin. And without it, I don't see this team being able to sustain as much as the offense as they think they can because having somebody drop back all game is not going to work, and especially if that person is uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Yo, and it, it's so crazy, though, because of the fact of how good Raheem Moster is looking when he's getting the it's ball. like a beast. <laughs> Bro, if you go from 15 carries to 25, right, we give him maybe, all right, maybe not 25, maybe 22. No, no. Why maybe not? 23. Why not? <laughs> 25 but sounds good to me. I mean, I'm just trying to negotiate here. You know, we got to start small, <laughs> right? Nah, but we got to get to 20 carries. He had, a, he had at that, least for one of them. 
No, no, for Mostert, most, in my opinion, bro, Mostert is our best true RB1 as far as, like, your traditional, like, yo, first down and 10, let's get seven, eight yards right here. I think Mostert is that guy. I think and his he has hands aren't bad either, so I don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah, I think he has the size. I think he has the speed. I think he he has what it takes, right? The only, the main concern with Mostert has always been his his health. his health. Correct, his health has been a concern. You he think looks that's why healthy. they're holding him back? He, he looks pretty healthy to me, though. No, he, he looks pretty healthy to me. I think it's more so McDaniel's just trying to come out and he's trying to you know make these big you know plays. And to his credit, it's working. It has worked for the first three weeks, and up until Tua got hurt this game, and even even late, we saw we saw uh, Teddy connect late in the game with Tyreek Hill. You know, on a play that it was kind of like a circus catch or whatever, but still, he was still calling that aggressive play calling. Yeah, and it's like, man, we 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 need we love that, but we also need some traditional football, man. We need to run the ball, establish that 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 run game, and get the ball out of our quarterback's hands, man. I mean, we definitely have to find a way to, you know, offer a different level of offense. It can't just be like Martin was saying, where we're dropping back. 40 to 50 times a game. We need to create a running game, not only for Teddy Bridgewater's sake moving forward, because we know he's going to play at least the very next game. I don't think two is coming back for the next two games at the bare minimum, right? Let's see what happens. Um, but Teddy's going to have to be ready. And you don't want Teddy throwing the ball 45 times. If you don't want Tua throwing it 40 times, you definitely don't want this guy throwing it 40 Even times. Less. So, we got to have the running game going in order to help him. And let's be honest, the Dolphins were in this game, right? Yeah. It was what, 17 to we're 17 to 15, with, right? With 12 minutes left in the, in the fourth quarter. Oh, no, we, we got all the way down to like three minutes and, when, when Teddy and, did. And, and, and right. And it was 20 to 15 at that point, which is, again, a still winnable area where we right. can get there, run down the field, get down the field, and, and score a touchdown. This offense is built for it, and it can do it. But it needs all the pieces to be working. And a big piece that's missing, we're going to beat it to death, man. But it's the running game. Yeah. Hey, let's let's not forget, since you brought up that, let's, I know, before I forget, Landon Roberts, back-to-back -back plays on the goal line. Stuffed, Huge play. Stuffed the run and, and kept play. us in the game. And kept us in the game. That, that yes, can't be, I'm sorry, I just, before I forget, I don't care where we jump. I got a shout that. out. That's a good <laughs> shout out. Landon Roberts, man. No, nah, hell yeah, man. The defense, man, if it's not one guy, it's another. You know what I mean? Where they pick each other up. I mean, in, for instance, in this game, there was one play where Brand, uh, Melvin Ingram completely missed the tackle, had him wrapped up and let him get away from him. But yet his teammate, Javon Holland, was there to pick up the slack and make the tackle, make the play. This guy but, hey, look, the that's neither here nor there. Listen, gentlemen, um, this is almost the end. Uh, one final thought before we get to our three and out here. You guys got one final thought on this game? Go ahead, Martin. Um, again, uh, I feel like the run game it will be my probably go to until we see it. We waited till the fourth quarter. I be end of the third, beginning of the fourth to run the ball again. Mostert ends up with a nice 69 yards. 20 of it probably came on one run. But if you want to see more of it, McDaniel's, check me out, man. I got you. <laughs> oh, yeah. My my last thought would be um, you know, not playing clean football. The, the fact that we had so many dumb penalties tonight, uh, drops, uh, missed assignments, just just dumbass penalties, man, DAPs, and, and that's not good. It'll happen to you on a short week. So uh, my final thought for this game, um, defense, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, McDaniels, we got to run the ball, baby. And uh, last thought is T's and P's to two attack of Iloa. I hope you're a good big guy, and we wish you a speedy recovery. Hope you come back sooner rather than later. Absolutely. So take us to our three and out, my man. It's time for three and out, presented to you guys by Empire Boutique. You know that they keep the boy fresh. Get those T's right now. Um, this is where we're going to bring you our different aspect for a loss, where we bring you our underwhelming performance of the game, our bruh moment of the game and of course the aqua and orange lining which is our little way of saying silver lining for next week uh martin who was your underwhelming performer of today i'm about to throw you guys off uh mcdaniel gets my vote good call i felt like he he came into the game with a scheme that shouldn't have been used he could have started the game running it he would have protected his quarterback that probably needed it that's my guy good call what about you joel 
Um, you didn't throw me off, brother, because that's exactly where I was going. Uh, <laughs> he, he praised him last week. He's been doing a great job. He he did a lot of great in this game, but yes, we, we need to see more of the run game. He stepped it up this week. We had 15 rushes just for Raheem Mostert, which is more than we've gotten in the previous weeks from all of our running backs combined, but uh, we need to see more of that, man. We need, we, we can't be so dependent on, on going, you know, airborne. So McDaniels, man, sorry. I feel like you guys hit it right on the nail um, because if we think about it, he can't get all the praise and not get any of the burning. He's the head coach. He's responsible for this. So, uh, actually, And he's even responsible for this. My underwhelming performance <laughs> is Keon Crossing, number 27, DB, out there with who was just picked up, um, has really no type of game reps. But, you know, McDaniel had him on the island out there, the defensive coordinator, Dean up one-on-one with no safety help. I don't know. Of course, we're setting this guy up for failure, but he also got shook out of his shoes. Uh, the bro moment of the game, Joel. Wait, what wait, you got? Wait, wait, you're not gonna wait for us in our underwhelming performance. That was it. I mean, you said McDaniels. I didn't say McDaniels. That was Martin. Oh, yeah. I thought you uh, you had agreed. I'm sorry. I thought you had agreed with both of us. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I thought you guys hit it on the. <laughs> like, I thought, I thought <laughs> you were being and moving on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's on me. You I good, dog? Yeah. Now we're back on to you. It's bro moment <laughs> of the time. Let's go. Yeah, my bro moment was when I just messed this whole segment up right now. Mm. Um, that was a bro moment. Um, uh, no, the, the the bro moment was you know unfortunately you know not to, to poke fun but just two are going down man you know bro. wasn't didn't look good you know it's like bro like come on like that's not what we want to see we just saw this man go down last year for six games seven games and cost us our season basically you know like what's gonna happen now so for me unfortunately it comes with sorrow but that was my bro moment that's fair what about you Martin bro I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick on him today McDaniel. Uh, Tua not only got hurt, but when Bridgewater came in the game, we did not run the ball. Uh, what else do you want to, what else do you, what else does it take for you to be like, all right, we need to change things up. Um, and Bridgewater's, I'm sorry, he's not the guy to be put on an island to, to make you look pretty. That's, that's my pick again. My bro moment of the game goes to Josh Boyer, defensive coordinator for blitzing with number 27 oh Keon crossing on single coverage when when we needed that guy to be somewhere up in the press mm. uh just some questionable 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 like blitz packages went to send people and just having these guys on the island with when we know they're not that good weird man bro weird deep cut, deep cut. yeah uh so let's get to the aqua and orange lining uh, for me, it's going to be that the Dolphins have 10 days off before their next game. Um, we're obviously going to need this rest. <laughs> we're going to need to figure out a new game plan, and we're going to need to get into this next game uh, with uh, good momentum in order to get back on winning track. What about you, Joel? Uh, let's go with Martin. I'll close this out. Perfect. Okay. Um, honestly, I guess it took to the third or fourth quarter, but we ran the damn ball 15 <laughs> times with Moster. Uh, how can you not be happy about that? I'm sorry, Tua. That's nothing to do with you, but we've got what I wanted. That's cool, man. That's a good call. Joel, wrap us up, buddy. <clears throat> uh, my aqua and orange lining is the fact that we it came down to the wire, you know, even with our backup QB in there, yeah. and we were still in the game. We still competed to the very end, basically. And uh, the most aqua and orange lining of it all is that we do have 10 days to rest before we go see the sorry-ass Jets on the road. So... I think we we we're good. We think we're 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 gonna be okay. We got some time to recover. We got some time to heal. Who knows? Maybe Tua gets clear to come back. Uh, we can pay somebody off. I don't know what's gonna happen there. Oh, but. that's the Miami Dolphins way for sure. And look, Martin said that the Jets are a team that you get over the hump with. So let's see <laughs> if it stays true. <laughs> let's do it. And we know the Bengals just came off an emotional victory against the Jets, so hopefully we have one emotional too. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to OnlyFans. Again, if you already subscribed, thank you so much for the support. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Also, like and comment. It helps out the algorithm. Make sure to follow my boys, Tuna Martin, and also Sports with Soso. And uh, until next time, y'all. Peace. Skyler Thompson. <laughs> Skyler Thompson, get out of here, dog. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs>